Good morning, church. Will you stay with me? Let's just prepare our hearts for worship this morning as we uh, give praise to our Father. Sims out of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Hey, Amen. Let's give him praise this morning. Yeah. 
amazing so glad you're here with us and we've got pastor mason back yeah uh it's just so nice of him to just put aside all the litigation due to the traffic violations he's facing to be here with us and just clear his head and get his heart right for what's about to come uh just very thankful you know to have had pastor colbreth with us uh serving and um ready to have mason deliver the word today if you don't have a church, if you're new with us, we're very techy. We can do tech. You can text Ace Connect to 77411. Tell us who you are and how we can pray for you, and we would love to do that. Um, hey, kiddos, K through five, you're out of here. Yeah, just get on over there with joy. Wow, they really wanted you to leave. A lot of, a lot of applause. Uh, Reengage, friends, has been postponed. Uh, for this Sunday, August 1st, it has been postponed. So we encourage all couples to consider investing in your marriage by attending the preview night at Anastasia 16, 110 Circle Drive East on Sunday, August 8th at 6 p.m. And uh, you can talk to Chad. He's both at the back. And you can email him, chad8571 at gmail.com. And uh, hey, we're going to continue uh, getting our hearts prepared for the offering. Is that correct? Sure. Will you, Chuck, will you come up and pray for the offering for us? I'll be here in just a moment. Good morning. Sorry, I had a little bit of technical issues going on. <laughs> Batteries went dead on, so I couldn't. Had to go get some more. <laughs> um, I guess, okay, well, hey, I'm up here again. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good, good. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, pray for our offering. Um, and for those of you who are actually at home right now, um, if you want to give, uh, all you have to do is text ACE GIVE to 77411. All right. Uh, if we would please bow our heads. Thank you, God. Thank you for this day. <clears throat> Thank you for this day that was not given to us, Lord. Father God, we just want to say right now as we get ready to help support your kingdom, Lord, that with whatever it is that each and every one of us gives, that you see to it that our own kingdoms 
and homes, families are helped to be taken care of, dear Lord. So, Father God, right now we say thank you for this. Thank you for your blessings, all that you give, all that we give to you and that you give back to us, dear Lord. So, right now we just say thank you once again. And amen. amen. Just invite you to stand up again as we continue to worship.
Good morning, church. Woo! See, people are already going out the door, and I haven't even started to preach yet. There you go. Woo! That's how you started up. Man, it's so good to be back. And uh, Lilith and I have missed y'all uh, so much. Come 7,000 miles in 15 states, we were ready to be home. Right? And we are so glad to be back and to be with our family and to just be able to just worship the Lord together. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, leadership team. Thank you, so our church, man, for giving us the blessing of a Sabbath, of a sabbatical. And that's what we want to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about what it means to have rest. When's the last time you had some good rest? Okay, I see some people in the back right now snoring. You're having it right now. So, no, um, no, seriously, I mean, that not it hard in today's society? Isn't it really tough to find a place where you can actually relax enough, be peaceful enough, have that place of confidence of knowing, you know what, I can just relax. I know right now, Mr. Wells, you're thinking, wow, my wife just went off into our kids' our ace kids area, there was like over 10 kids that went in there. Do you think she's having a rest? But it's a good, it's still a good thing because we love our families and we love having all those kids together and celebrating together in Christ. And today as we gather together, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 4 and really allowing it to kind of speak into our lives on whether or not we're allowing God the rest that he has for us to really bring us a time of refreshing, a time of rejuvenation, a time that is filled with his presence. And so today, as we have this opportunity, I don't know about you, I mean, for our church, the reason why I was given a sabbatical is I've now been with Anastasia Church for over 20 years. And every 10 years, every 10 years, our church says, you know what? Our pastors, they need a break. You know, so every 10 years, they give us a month off to really lean into God, to enjoy some time. And I want to thank Dr. West and as well as Dr. Colbert, who is here and just spoke here so wonderfully. Last week on Heaven, I heard he hit it out of, the, out of earth, <laughs> right, literally. And just um, so thankful for him and his lead. He's one of the mentors in my life. That I, that I kind of connect to and, and lean into when I need some advice and just, just an ability to be able to hear God through somebody else who is wise. Just a, just a great guy and so thankful for what he did. But our church really kind of recognizes that and says, you know what, we're going to give you the time to go away and we're going to pay for you to do that and we're going to let you go and just enjoy being in God's presence without all the stuff that comes with being a part of leading a church. And so what would happen if someone came to you and said, you know what, hey, you get a month off and I'm going to pay you for it. And you said, no. People think you crazy. You cray cray, right? I mean, that's like something you don't pass up, right? That is something that is like, wow. Well, I want to share with you today something better than a month. And paid. I'm talking about rest not only here on earth, but also in heaven for eternity. And there are people that were resisting a rest. That God had offered this rest to them in his presence. And they resisted it. They said, no, I've got the way that I've been doing it and I don't want to go there. And so for us today, I want us to really look into who we are. Are we in that same boat? Have we gotten caught up in that place of saying, you know what, God? I know you've got this, but I, man, I'm just, I'm comfortable with how much control that I have and where I'm at. And so this whole rest thing, I'll take it the way that I want it, but this, the way that you've designed it, mm, I don't know about that. So let's look at that today. We're going to really just sink into Hebrews chapter 4. And then if we have some time, after our time of invitation, I want to share with you some insight from our, our trip out to the Pacific Northwest. Just some of the things that God taught me as well. But let's look at, let's stand together in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God's word that he gives us so that we might know him and be 
rejuvenated by him as well. But this is Hebrews chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us, just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he had said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he is somewhere spoken on the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day. Today. Amen. Today. Right. Saying through David so long afterward. And the words already quoted today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest... God would have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. <laughs> Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, wow, we so need you. Wow, we need to cry out to you and say, Father God, we accept your rest. We don't resist it. Lord, we embrace you. And Lord, in embracing you because we know that you, Father God, don't leave us. You don't forsake us. That you love us. That, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, we can honestly find rest. In today's world, Lord God, right now, boy, do we ever need that. So, Lord God, empty me. Lord God, allow your Holy Spirit that we welcomed into this place. Lord God, let that which is your word speak into our hearts that we not, not be the same as when we walked in earlier today. Lord, we turn all this over to you, believing, Lord God, that your rest is here with us. And Lord, we want to take it with us as we leave today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can take a seat. So, what do you think is a Sabbath rest? I mean, think about that. When I say that word, I mean, it's not something that we hear very often, right? This whole world, this whole word Sabbath, you know, or rest for that matter, right? I mean, in, in our society today, I mean, we celebrate people that work seven days a week. They work, or some of them work eight days a week. And it's like, where do they come up with that? You know, it's like these people that are always going, always going, always working, always doing. But where's the rest? Where's the Sabbath? Where's that place of trusting God and following his example and really allowing his presence and his peace to overcome anything that might be keeping us, hindering us? in that rest that he has for us. You see, rest 
not only in this passage, when we look at it, it's interesting because it's used several times. And most of them, except for one, all throughout the verses, are referring to this one rest, which is katapausin, which means to cause to cease, to rest from weariness, to settle down. Settle down. I mean, some of us right now, settle down. I mean, there's stuff going on in our lives right now. And for us to really settle down? Without God, you can't. As much as you try, as much as sleep you might have gotten, which, by the way, sleep is not a cause of rest. It's a symptom. <laughs> you might be able to get, be getting a whole lot of sleep but you're not resting. And there's some of us, we're not getting any sleep at all. We're definitely not resting. But to think about this place of, wait a minute, to actually settle down, to rest from weariness? I mean, this is similar to Israel being promised the land of milk and honey from their escape out of Egypt. And some of us, we're in the middle of our Egypt right now. We need to find that place that we can settle down. And it's not a location. It's a person. It's a person of Jesus Christ. And, and all throughout this passage, it's referring to this katapasim. But in verse 9, it's a unique rest. It's the only place in all of Scripture that uses this Sabbath or sabbatismos, which is defined as a blessed rest from life's troubles when finished in the age to come in heaven. I love last week that you talked about heaven, that you talked about who's in heaven, what are you going to do in heaven, all the things about heaven, because, man, that is a hope. That is something that is to come, and that is a rest that God has promised to us in and only through his son, Jesus Christ. But church, that Sabbath rest is also something that he can offer to us here, that we can find that place, we can find his presence, we can find that unique rest in that blessed rest from life's troubles. And so I really want us to talk about that. Because how in the world do you rest in a place that now for over a year we've been dealing with this pandemic. With all the stresses of, of work issues. With all the things of school and, and relationships and all the clutter. <coughs> all the things that are out there that bring us to that trying to steal our rest from us. So I've got three things that I want us to look at from this passage that really help us to lean in to what this rest is. Because first and foremost, Sabbath surrendering means putting God first. And you've done that today by being here. And those of you that are watching online, you're being a part of prioritizing a time that says, I want to put God first. And so I don't want to listen to this Pastor Mason guy. I want to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want to listen to the Word. And that which comes hopefully through me and hopefully through the fullness of God will speak into your life. And that Sabbath rest, that laying aside, that ceasing of work and putting into the, that moment, that period of time that you can say, God, I'm yours. And in this passage, this is in the book of Hebrews. So this is a book that's written specifically to Jewish believers. And so for them, this Sabbath was something that they were all in for. I mean, this is one of the commandments. I mean, this is one of the big ten, right? Anybody know which commandment it is? It's all right, I heard it, four. Um, it's the fourth commandment. And it's this, this place of, you know, it's these rules. And, they, man, that, the religion part of their life, they had that down when it came to the rules, when it came to the traditions, when it came to all these things that they had to do, the do's and the don'ts. Those ten do's and don'ts, they made sure that, you know, I've got this down. And so for them, this putting God first and saying, I'm going to take this Sabbath, man, it was ingrained in them. They memorized it. They sang it. They were all about following his example of physical earthly rest because he initiated it by his example. And we see that it's quoted in Hebrews chapter 4. And I love the passage in Hebrews chapter 4 because it says this. It says, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day. I love that phrase because it's kind of, for me, 
what that kind of spoke into me is, have you ever tried to quote a Bible verse but didn't know the address? I, mean, I know it says it somewhere in Scripture. It's spoken of somewhere, and this is what he says. You know, it's not like it goes and says, you know, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, because by the way, we as humans put those little addresses in later on. It was a wholeness of Scripture that they put together. But he's saying, you know, somewhere in Scripture, it said this, and sure enough, it's from Genesis 2. It's in the beginning, and it says, On the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his word that he had done in creation, all his work he had done in creation. Wow! The God of the universe who, by the way, doesn't get tired, but gave us an example to follow. He initiated this rest. He initiated this place of saying, you know what? I'm going to do something that I want you to follow through with. And so for him, we get to be a part of saying, okay, God, Sabbath, rest. I mean, honestly, when's the last time you chose not to work for a full day each week in order to lean into God and grow closer to him with your loved ones. A whole day. Mm. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy, God. Because for us, God's given us an example for us to follow, to find peace, to find reassurance, to find rejuvenation. And replenishing the presence of God. And for us, when we Sabbath surrender, we put God first. It's one of the reasons we meet on Sundays for church, why we're here today. I mean, it's actually originally practiced on Saturday. You know, for, for those that were in the, this context, they were used to it being on a Saturday. But as the church moved, they wanted to set aside the day of resurrection. And so that's why on Sunday, we now come together and we put Sunday aside to say, you know what, God, this is yours. I'm going to put God first. I'm going to love you first, and then I'm going to love one another as myself. And so in that, when we do that, we, we put God first and we see what's going on. But a huge problem has come out of that. And for the Jews in that period of time, it actually still persists today in the Christian church. And that is a religion of rules and traditions overtook a relationship with God. That they made it about the rule. They made it about the Sabbath. They made it about all these traditions that they had and all these rules that were set up. And for them, it became about that instead of about just, man, God. I need you. Take over. I surrender. I'm listening. I'm ready to give up all that I want control of. And I just, at your feet. And so because of that, these religious rules and these traditions, which by the way, I mean, we've only been around for four years, but this church has its traditions. We, we have the things that we're used to doing because every time we move something a little bit or we change something a little around, people look at us like, what you doing? It's human nature to lean into rules and traditions. But it's the spirit of God that says rest. And so the second way we refuse to resist a rest from Hebrews chapter 4 is this. Sabbath surrendering means practicing God faith. So now it was first God first, but what about God faith next? Because this is huge. You see, these religious Jews were hearing the word of God, but then refusing to listen to his good news by applying it in daily living in faith. You see, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 says this, For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. You see, they were good with the rules, even though they, just like we, broke, broke them all the time. <laughs> but what they would do is they say, I break them less than that guy. I follow these rules and traditions better than she does. So I'm good. 
because we start comparing ourselves to each other that way. And we miss out on the rest because we get that judgmental spirit. That judgmental spirit keeps us from that peace of God that surpasses all understanding. What instead what he wants us to be a part of is loving him and resting in him, listening to him. Because if you're listening to him, there is no thought in you that says that you're better than them. Because if you're really in the rest of God, you know what he does? He says, wow, without God, I am nothing. And my brother, my sister, my family, my neighbor, my boss, that person that cut me off on US-1, God loves them just as much, unconditionally. And so as we walk through that process and we, we see this good news, but we choose not to live in faith, they chose not to live in this faith because it was easier for them to wrap their minds around the traditions instead of trust that Jesus was the promise. All along, what they'd been waiting for, all along, what they really needed, all along, who we have has already been given to us. We've got to stop resisting him. We've got to start living in the faith of saying, you know what? It's not about the tradition. It's not about the rules because they never provide peace. They never give assurance of our salvation. Because listen to this. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 8, it says this. For by grace you've been saved. Through faith. And it is not your own doing, it's a gift of God. It's not your own doing. Say that right now. It's not my own doing. It's what? A gift of God. It's not as a result of works so that no one may boast. You see this faith that we have? This is trusting in God in something that we can't see, in something we can't touch, in something that we can't taste. Something that we just say, okay, God, I believe your word. I believe your leading. I'm going to follow you in the ways that you've shown us how to be, and I'm going to live like Jesus. Even if it makes my life a living hell. Because I know that his rest, his peace, will take me through it. And so as you look into that, look, it's interesting because in that, that's Ephesians chapter 2, but just a few verses over, it says this in Ephesians 3, starting in verse 11. In Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Do you have confidence in your faith? Do you have assurance of who you are in Christ? That in this moment, that if this was your last moment, are you ready? Because that's what the enemy wants to do is he wants to steal, kill, and destroy that. He wants to take away your readiness. He wants to make you restless. And so in that, as we think about that, are we keeping a sacred scorecard or putting notches on our spiritual belts each time we follow the traditions of our religion? Or are we falling more and more in love with Jesus day by day, breath by breath, moment by moment? That's where rest is. Rest isn't going, oh, yeah, I got that done, check. Rest isn't, mm, yep, served at church today. Rest isn't, oh, I prayed. Rest isn't, it's not all this, maybe it's in the back of your mind, maybe it's subconscious, maybe it's something where we're kind of keeping a tab. No. Rest is saying, the blood of Jesus covers me. Because of that, wow, God, you get it all. And I just royally screwed up, but praise God, because of the blood, he still covered me. <laughs> and he's even going to use that blunder to bring about his blessing. And so, church, the last thing that I see in this passage when it comes to this rest, the way that we choose not to resist a rest from Hebrews 4 is this. Sabbath surrendering means producing God fruit. It's God first, it's God faith, and then it's God fruit. Because if we're really resting in him, it's going to produce something. It's, it's amazing what happens when we actually be still and know that he is God. It's amazing that when we take our hands off the wheel and say, okay, God, it's yours, 
and we let him take us in the directions. We let him guide us. We let his rest then get us ready for what he's got for us in store for that over and abundance, that fullness that only he can provide. And so, church, when you look at verse 11, it talks about striving to enter his rest. Isn't that, doesn't that seem kind of ironic, you know, like opposite? Strive to enter his rest. Work to rest. What? I'm not talking about being exhausted so much that you just plop down and you have to just, I can't move anymore. I'm talking about rest. No, I'm talking about striving. In other words, saying, God, everything that I do. I mean, the Olympics are going on right now, right? We see people that have devoted their entire lives for these just few moments. We see some of the people, especially the ones we had expectations for them to win, and them saying, you know what, I can't do it. There's some stuff going on in my life. that, get, And a lot of people see that as failure. What? That's somebody that's understanding what's going on in their life right now and saying, you know, I need a rest. Because if I don't, I'm going to mess up. And so for us to say, you know what, wait a minute, in the midst of all of this, instead of lifting up all these people that, that win, we don't have to win because Jesus has already won for us. And so we strive in a place of saying, okay, God, I surrender. You strive by saying, I give up. You strive by saying, not my will, but your will be done. You strive by saying, this is not about me, God, this is about you and giving him all the glory. And then in verse 12, it talks about his word that's what? Living and active. And it pierces even the soul and spirit and it even to the intentions of our hearts. I mean, is God living and active in you through his word and Holy Spirit? Are you holding fast to the confession of Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Man, I don't know about you, but if you're going through a season right now where really you need resuscitation. And then there's rejuvenation then this passage brings rebirth and recharge. Because look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Because here's where it all comes down to. You want to know how to strive? You want to know how to live in such a way that, that really has the fruit of God, that really produces that which is what he gives us? It's here. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. There's victory. There's the victory. The victory is in Jesus. And then it says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There it is. We don't receive a gold medal. What we receive is grace and mercy. What he has for us is his presence. What he has for us is real rest. What he has for us is not earning it and deserving it. It's surrendering to him. The church in these moments, how about you? Are you putting God first? And if you are putting God first, are you then allowing God faith to direct you? By doing things that you can't do in your own strength. By trusting him to say, you know what, God? This is all for you. And then in that faith, that you expect God fruit to change other people's lives. Because he moves in and through you in ways that you could have never done on your own. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are. Lord, we recognize that when it comes to all the things that, Lord, we're striving for, that we're working in, but Lord, what about striving for rest? What about truly committing to a Sabbath? What about worshiping you in every aspect of our life? And not just giving you a day, but Lord God, giving you our everything. Lord God, today, Lord, we surrender to Jesus. And Lord God, as we sing this song, Lord God, we recognize that it is only through you because it's what you've gone through 
Lord, you can sympathize with our weaknesses because you are one of us. Lord, you went through every temptation that we had. You, under, and you understand every struggle that we're going through. You went through a time where it was tough, where it was a challenge, where it was so hard for you to find rest. But Lord God, you still went off and you spent those times in prayer with the Father. But Lord God, you still got alone and refreshed in your presence. Lord God, today, for those of us that are striving for work, for those of us that are striving for family, for those of us that are striving for everything else except for you, Lord God, we surrender. Lord, we ask for a Sabbath rest. Because it's in your promise. It's through your son, Jesus Christ. That Lord God, not only can we find a way to cease and to settle down here on earth, even in the midst of all of this craziness, but Lord God, there's a promise of a Sabbath rest for all eternity. Because you've forgiven us of our sin. Because in saying, God, I give up. Take over my life. Forgive me of my sin. Lord, I'm yours. Lord God, you then give us peace. And so, Lord, in all of this today, as we sing this song, Lord God, we then say to you, Father God, I'm yours. Take over. And all God's people said, amen. As you stand, we're going to sing together. For those of you that are online, if God's moving in your life and you want to take those next steps, would you please text ACE Connect to 77411? For those of us in the room right now, if God's kind of saying, you know what, man, I've been striving for work. I've been striving for all of these worldly things for so long. It's time for me to strive for Jesus. It's time for me to rest in Christ. If that's you, we'd love to connect with you, to pray with you, to share with you what that means and having a relationship with God and not a rules and tradition with God that's going to fall short all the time. We have a next steps table right out there. Or if you'd like to text Ace Connect to 77411 and we'll follow up with that later on in the week. But let's sing together now as we have this opportunity to so say, you know what, God? Man, I rest in you alone. There's nothing worth more than will ever come close. No thing can compare to your living hope. Your presence, Lord. Sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, sing, Holy Spirit. Jesus. 
Oh. 